Hey, this is Glenn Johnson, former light heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Boxing During Dinner. Hey guys, this is Orlando Cuellar, here with Boxing During Dinner. The knockout when it comes to internet information on boxing, Boxing During Dinner is number one. Watch it, keep your eyes on them, because they're going places, and they take you places where you, you get it first from Boxing During Dinner, number one. And welcome to another edition of Boxing During Dinner episode 15. 15, we Throw made it, up. man. 15 rounds. Five Old more, school. Five more fingers than that. Manila. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to hire a new host of when we get to the 20. Well, we have we have some champagne here because, you know, we're, we're, we're celebrating. We're celebrating. We Why have not? a thousand views. It's, Last week's episode. Yeah. Episode 14 was, uh, was our most viewed episode. And, yeah. and we want to thank everybody for watching Boxing During Dinner. You know, it's catching on. But you know what? We're not satisfied with 1,000. We want you to tell your friends and tell your friends right. and their friends tell their friends. It's like the whole viral thing. So, yeah. David, if you want to start uh, We can do this, this every weekend. Champagne. All right. <laughs> if that, is that all right with you? <laughs> yeah. Keep, Keep banging. banging. Yeah. So, all right. So, let's so, do this uh, thing. Bo boxing During Dinner. Get He's going to pop some champagne. And I'm going to show you what the, what the dinner is today. Some vaca frita. By tell, Chef tell the white Maria Alvarez. Vaca frita stands for fried cow, but we don't really fry a cow. Oh my god, that's good. <laughs> I can't wait. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> real excited. <laughs> this is kind of like of pot cooking. roast for yeah. you gringos, right? Right, David? Pot roast, but fried in a uh, pan? Yeah, sure. Something like that. And David obviously eats a little healthier, so he has broccoli, some yeah, zucchini. Yeah, there's a little bit of sweet. I can't stop. Chicken. I gotta better stop pouring that. Sweet potatoes uh, right here, carrots, zucchini, broccoli, grilled chicken. Amazing. Would you care to pass the champagne? I, oh, absolutely, I would. My I kind co-host. Apologize for that. I should have poured yours first, but I have no manners. Exactly. This and of course, no uh, this portion of the meal was prepared by Armando's mother, and oh, this mom. portion of the meal was prepared by our friend Jewel's Jessica Santana, hanging out right over here, visiting boxing during dinner for the first time. But she's a fan, even though we, she doesn't know We always know most have visiting chefs. About. But you know what? We want to kick this off with our models. You know, week after week, you guys ask for models. Of course. And this week. For our 15th round, our 15th episode, we want to give you the best of boxing during dinner. Take a look at him. Miami, bitch. And David, we've had some fine models beat, you know, in our 15 shows. It has nothing to do with either of us, so I don't know. <laughs> do you think our thousand views are based on the models or, or oh, I can us? Tell you it's or not the me. content? It's not me. Certainly not you. <laughs> well, you know, we okay. do have some content to talk about. Amir Khan and Zab Judah and David. Let me just start off by telling you. I was utterly impressed with Amir Khan. His hand speed. His power. I mean, he just dominated Zab Judah. Low blow or not low blow, I didn't think it was a low blow. It didn't matter. Judah would have been out 20 seconds later. I think the referee did him a favor by, by counting the 10. I have to agree. And, you know, unfortunately, this is the Zab Judah we came to know is, you know, the one who will find an excuse to get out of the fight when the going gets tough. But at first I wasn't impressed because I figured, you know, Khan didn't do anything spectacular. But I watched the fight again on Sunday morning and thought to myself, what is spectacular is the fact that, that Judah couldn't lay a glove on him. And, and Khan is not known as a defensive fighter, but he's tightened up his offensive Absolutely. game enough to the point where that is his defense. And... Uh, this would have been ludicrous to think even a year ago that Khan could share the same ring as Floyd Mayweather, but now you put him, you know, in 2012 as a possible fight. Anything can happen. You got Mayweather who could be 35 at that point, Khan would be 25. It's, you know, again, we're we're talking hypothetical fights, but but Khan looked great and he truly think, is the class at 140. I think he's a top 5 pound for pound fighter right now. I mean, the guy looked amazing. He has speed. Him and Freddie Roach have been working very well together. I, I think this guy's the real deal, and he's probably one of the best fighters in the game today. What makes him exciting, too, is the fact that he can still get hit on the chin. Um, was Zab Judah the person to do that? No. I don't think Zab Judah is the ultimate test for Khan. But at 140 pounds, and if he's not fighting Timothy Bradley, who else is there? You know, he, he fought the best available opponent. You have to give him credit for that. Anybody available in his weight class that's been put up to him, he's taken on. Now you mentioned Timothy Bradley. He says he doesn't need Amir Khan. I mean, who does Tim Bradley want to fight? I love Tim Bradley as a fighter. I think he's up there with Amir Khan at 140. But seriously, if he, if he doesn't fight Khan, who's he going to fight? They're talking about putting him in against Brandon Rios, which would be an exciting fight. As an eliminator fight. match for Pacquiao. But, you know, how could you say that you don't need Amir Khan? He's the best in your and, division. And why would you want a Brandon Rios fight instead? Which, to me, I mean, the most lucrative fight for him at 140 pounds is Amir Khan. I mean, he skipped out on his biggest payday for a potential fight with Pacquiao or Mayweather, and, and that's to me, is putting much, too much stock in, in a hypothetical scenario. And right, I, and, and the hypothetical scenario, Mayweather or Pacquiao, what if Pacquiao retires? What if Mayweather retires? What if Victor what if Ortiz knocks out Mayweather, or Pacquiao gets beat by, by Marquez in November? You never know. So this guy's putting all his eggs 
in that basket. He's missing out on a big payday with Khan. I just think it's wrong of him to do so. And I, I, like I said, I love Tim Bradley, but you know what? I think he's wrong in, in, in this matter. I, I agree. And, and I don't like Amir Khan the same way that I like Timothy Bradley, but I can't deny that his skill level right now is unique at 140 pounds. And if Tim Bradley is not fighting, it's the same way that Pacquiao is the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport because Mayweather was not fighting and Pacquiao is convincingly beating people. Tim Bradley cannot expect to continue to hold on to his spot if he's not fighting. Um, and at 147 pounds, Pacquiao and Mayweather, everybody wants that. And I think Zab Judah's done as a, as a legit contender. You know, he might be able to get some, some fights and, and, you know, fight some of the younger guys up and coming. And you know what? It's, it's not far-fetched to say he could beat some of these guys. Mm -hmm. But as far as beating the elite, he's never been able to beat the elite. No. Even I like when he Zab, was in his physical prime. Exactly. I like Zab Judah, but this might be the end of the road for him. I would have something else to say, but... Yeah, but, you know who has, but you know who has a lot to say? Glenn Johnson. And you know what? We, we went to Thumb Gym, which is actually right across the street from the boxing during dinner studios. Yeah, right through that <laughs> wall. <laughs> I like, yeah, we call it our studios. It's a living room. It's, it's a living room. Yeah. And Glenn Johnson, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, very special guest, a friend of the, of the program, if you want to say awesome. that. I was just yeah. watching Blue Chips. There was a lot of a friend <laughs> of the program with Happy, paying yeah. Shaquille O'Neal. That's a good one. The, the fact I've seen that movie... Just diminishes my... How about we just go to Glenn Johnson? Yeah, let's go to Glenn Johnson. Boxing during dinner with a very special guest, former light heavyweight champion of the world, Glenn Johnson. Glenn, welcome to Boxing During Dinner. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. Glenn, obviously you're, you're here at Dump Gym. You know, you're, you're working out. You don't have a fight, but a, a champion like Glenn Johnson always needs to keep in shape, right? Well, definitely. You know, I'm in the gym working on a few things that... I think I need to get better at. Um, obviously, I'm winning all the fights but the big ones, so we still have to uh, keep on sharpening up our tools and, and try to see what we can do a little different so we can win the, um, the major fights. Your last fight against Carl Froch in the super middleweight tournament, a lot of people picked you to win that fight. Boxing during dinner picked you to win that fight. Uh, what, what do you think happened? What, what led you to lose that fight against Carl Froch? Um, you know, I got a little greedy. Um, got out my game plan a little bit, um, pick up some bad habits along the way, you know, trying so hard to be a puncher, um, obviously because I thought, you know, that would bring me more glory and um, I'm putting me in the picture a little bit better. So, you know, I was trying to be a little bit too much of a puncher and I just needed to be, you know, a little bit more of a boxer and, and just try to stick with what works for me, you know, and throw volume of punches. Um, like I was doing before instead of uh, loading up. To, to what do you attribute the fact that you're, <clears throat> you're already in your, in your 40s, but and you're competitive with everybody you fight, even the, the fights you lose, I mean, you lose them by, by a very slim margin, and you're still competitive and still beating some younger fighters. Um, you know, just hard work, staying in the gym, um, don't allow my body to get rusty. Um, you know, don't allow my brain to get rusty and, and, and again, keeping my weight down and stuff so I don't bounce up and down in weight too much. I think all of that might be a factor and just, just the fact that I don't drink and smoke and kind of live a clean life and stuff like that. What are some fights that you, that you hope to get within the next year? Um, you know, there's a Bernard Hopkins fight that's out there. Um, I would like to get again, you know, I'm in, I'm in the super middleweight division. We have a lot of fights out there like Ward and um, even a rematch with Carl Frotch. Um, you know, they got Abraham out there, you got um, uh, Kessler, and um, also you, you have um, uh, the guy over there in Canada, what's, what's his name? Um, John Pascal. Well, John Pascal as well, but that's like heavyweight, but and uh, Lucien Boutte as well, you know. You know, all of these fights are still out there for me, so, you know, it all depends on if these guys want to fight or not. Has it always stung you just a little bit that uh, Bernard Hopkins has been the only the only man who's ever stopped you in a boxing ring? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not really surprised about that too much. Uh, obviously, um, he stopped me in a cut. Um, cut happens in boxing. Um, I was able to stay away from getting cut that bad. Uh, obviously, my skills have gotten better. I'm a good defensive fighter. Um, so, yeah, you know. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable, um, you know, within my style and, and pretty confident um, and, and, and have a very good understanding of, of how I go out there and, and, and fight and protect myself. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not that shocked about not getting stopped or, or get um, beat up in the boxing ring. Who wins the Carl Froch-Andre Ward fight? 
I'm gonna have to go with Ward because he's the homegrown kid. Um, Carl Frotch, uh, he's a good fighter, but you know he's not going to win the, this, the fight that he won against me against Andre Ward. Again, Andre Ward is an American fighter fighting in America. You know, you, as much as I love Paul Williams and I have a lot of respect for Paul Williams, I know him personally. Um, and we are friendly, but you know, in my opinion, he didn't win that fight against. The Cuban kid, he got beat up so easily and so convincingly and, and the judges find a way to give him that fight. So, you know, things like that, you have to look at and look at an American kid fighting against a foreigner. More than likely, uh, it's in a difficult position for him to win. Interesting prediction. And another prediction that, that Glenn has, we spoke about it in Vegas after the pacquiao Mosley fight. Pacquiao versus Mayweather, you're the opinion that, that Pacquiao will beat Mayweather and, and, and you gave me a very interesting reason reason why. I remember loving your prediction. Why, why do you think Pacquiao will beat Mayweather? Um, you know, Pacquiao is, is a fighter that throws volume of punches. Um, and Mayweather is a fighter that play the you know play defense very good. I mean he's the greatest defensive fighter, um, you know, but he moves his head, but you know, he needs time. To, to reset and and, and, and and how to capitalize on, on your mistakes because that's how he fights. He fight and making fighters make mistakes and capitalize on it. The fact that Pacquiao throws so much punches, he's so fast, the volume um, of punches is coming all the time. It's not good for defensive fighter, counter punches and these type fighters because it's just too many punches coming from so many different angles and continuous. So it's a difficult style to fight. And, and I always say, when you look at a fighter and how a fighter um, thinks, and if he, he sees something in that fight that he's not interested in, he's not jumping through hoops to go pick up a big payday, the biggest payday probably in the history of boxing, and he, he recognized something that, that's there, so um, why he's taking his time. So I, I always feel like it's hard for me to have confidence in somebody that really don't show the confidence in himself. Um, so I really believe that uh, Pacquiao uh, style is a difficult style for Mayweather. Um, as much as I would like to see Mayweather win the fight, I don't think it would happen. Glenn, thanks a lot for being on Boxing During Dinner. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I didn't get anything to eat, though. <laughs> Next time. All right. And Glenn Johnson, one of the nicest guys in the sport. And that was some good stuff on Frotch and Ward. I mean, thinking that Ward's going to win just based on the fact that he's yeah, the American you know, fighting at is, home. We haven't really talked about this much, but... A lot of people, at least on the American side, are expecting because of uh, of Andre Ward's skill set that he's just going to outclass Carl Frosch. But you know what? Carl Frosch has made his way through this entire tournament by beating expectations. He's been exactly. he's been the underdog in a number of his fights, but he continues to you know to beat people and beat them convincingly. No, and so. he beat Glenn Johnson, who's you know he's he's right. the toughest forty something year old in the sport. You know, I guess next to Hopkins, and and he did mention he want to he wants to fight Hopkins. That would be a good rematch at I'd this point it. of the career. I I'd watch it too. Watch it. And and this Friday we got a uh, Victor Cayo and uh, Lamont, Lamont Peterson. Peterson. That's a good fight. I think so. And you know, and this is it's amazing how how much difference one fight can make. The last fight that Lamont Peterson had was a draw with Victor Ortiz. Now look at where they are. Exactly. He's fighting on Friday night fights because he turned down a fight against Amir Khan. Would have been Lamont Peterson's biggest payday. Uh, Ortiz, of course, goes on and knocks out on you know, well, beats up Andre Berto, and. You know, th this is why these guys need to stay active. And one more thing on Amir Khan. Now that you now that you say that about Lamont Peterson, the fact that so many people are ducking him means that the kid's doing something right. Mm -hmm. And Amir Khan is one of the best fighters in boxing. I'm not ready to put him up there with Pacquiao and Mayweather yet, but you know he's getting there. He's 24 years old. So mm -hmm. Brady's press gun knocked him out. A lot of people get knocked out. So, but you know what? Big show next week. Yeah, really looking forward to this. Randall show. Bailey, the former WBO junior welterweight champion and former interim junior welterweight champion uh, WBA, he'll be here with us. And Ed Paredes, who was not here this week, he's training tough, man. He fights August 12th. August 12th at the So Hard you know Rock. he's he's doing the right thing by turning us down today. He he has to yeah. train. You know, <laughs> training is more important than boxing during dinner, but. Hogwash. <laughs> no, nothing's more important than boxing during so dinner. So follow us on Twitter at box during dinner, and you could also email us. Yeah, uh, boxing during dinner at gmail.com. We got the Facebook fan page as well, and uh, we're posting up pictures. We're gonna have more videos coming and a website. I know we promised this would be there soon. It will it's be. It's gonna be there soon. We're working Very on it soon. tonight. As soon as we hang up here. Very soon. That's this guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, s send us your comments. You know, ask you know questions. If you guys have questions for Bailey and Paredes. Send it to us, Tweet and we'll us. make sure to, to ask them. This show's for you. So we'll see you next week, and when I want 2,000 views this week. I said that really loud. 2,000. 2,000.